Hey, welcome back to our Achievement Hunter series, aimed at extorting the Stormwind gameplay achievements until they surrender. We've surged through the Warrior, Warlock, and Shaman achievements already, and this time there are three Rogue achievements which can't keep their secrets from our informants. Let's get into it. Huh, this should be interesting. In today's video, we're covering the following three Rogue achievements. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Ultimately contracting us to deal 400 damage with garrots and bleeds. A girl has no face. Making us an understudy to Maestra of the Masquerade until we start the game as every other class. And expecting an exploding pen? Resorting to us playing every spy gizmo in one game. We don't necessarily have to win games to complete these, so sneaky methods for completing these are quite welcome when it makes things more interesting or efficient. As always, there are timestamps for each achievement and deck codes for each deck mentioned in the description below in case you'd like to skip to one you're looking for. Now let's get to the root of any sketchy information about these achievements. Shall we begin with the most deceptive of the achievements? For a girl has no face, all we have to do is start the game as each other class thanks to Maestra of the Masquerade. We tested inning the game right after the mulligan and it gave us credit, but you may not even have to wait for the mulligan to complete. That's still untested unfortunately. So you could just concede a bunch if you're in a hurry to complete this one. Before we get into our own suggestions for this achievement, I should note that it's not possible to get Maestra from Duel's Buckets if you don't have her. She does appear on the list of legendaries at heartharena.com, so it may be possible to get her in an arena draft, but it would be surprising if you can knock this achievement out in a single run. She's not available in the Whizbang the Wonderful lists either, so if you don't have her, you might consider giving this one a pass. If you do have Maestra, tossing her into any deck whatsoever will get progress towards this achievement. But why not have fun with it? Blood Me Fist made a really fun Sus Supreme rogue deck that runs Maestra as the only rogue card alongside a bunch of cheap spell generation minions and Lady Prester. There's a link to the memes and dreams right up in the description, but to quote the article, the meme Use Maestra to disguise yourself and bewilder opponents into thinking that they are back at rank 25 with your seemingly unoptimized deck. The dream, right before you destroy your opponent with your third 1 to 3 mana Alexstrasza the Lifebinder, play Maestra and reveal your grand deception to the opponent. The concept is hilarious, and it was honestly a lot of fun to play. With Jackson and tradable cards alongside Talon to help search for Lady Prester, it's actually not too difficult to find her in time to get some real value and swing the game back in your favor. Have fun bewildering opponents who encounter you while you're switching faces. Now let's tackle some spy business with Spymaster Scabs and Expecting an exploding pin? This one's pretty straightforward if you have the rogue questline in your collection, but we'll also touch on some options for any of you who don't have a copy of the questline after these first couple decks. If you just want to knock this out quickly with a strong deck, we aren't highlighting it here, but there's a code for a stealth battlegrounds quest deck from HS Replay in the description. What we are highlighting here is the fun deck we used to knock this achievement out on day one. This Manipulate the Imposter Rogue. It's a fun twist on Quest Rogue, which has the option of bouncing scabs upon questline completion. But there are several other strong targets to bounce as well. Jandis and Kazakus are great value, but this deck is the questline predecessor of the Whose Questline Rogue we'll be recapping in a moment which means this deck also runs Faceless Manipulator to copy a high value minion from the opponent, such as their questline Mercenary. Though Scabs himself isn't too bad to copy in a pinch. We've got a highlight video showing how we copied our opponent's Mercenary and when we pulled off this achievement, linked above and in the description in case you'd like to see more of this deck in action. 
But if you don't have the questline, one option would be to use the Who's Questline Rogue deck we've introduced a couple times now. It will count on running into a Questline Rogue opponent who doesn't kill you with a Wind Fury stealthed scabs before you can play out your own copy and all the gizmos. As most opponents will stealth their scabs with the Noggin Fog Generator, Vanessa Van Cleef and Faceless Manipulator will have a hard time getting a copy of Scabs in time, meaning it will most likely rely on playing a well-timed Plagiarize. You'll also need to take space in hand into consideration since you'll need room for all the gizmos which you didn't copy from the opponent in hand as well. So this one has a few additional challenges to successfully pull it off. Though there is one more way you could knock this out if you're extremely patient and lucky enough to run into an opponent in wild who doesn't kill you by turn 5. Whizbang the Wonderful. He's only available in wild now, but he does give access to decks from the deck recipes. And one of those deck recipes happens to be a medium quality questline rogue deck. It's a 1 in 20 chance to get that specific deck, and you'll need quite a bit of skill and luck to overcome wild ladder decks with it. But at least for this achievement, there is one more way to pull it off without owning a copy of the questline. I wish you the best of luck in finding the imposter. And last, we have the three stage achievement. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. If you were to approach this one with just two copies of Garot without any extra shuffles or spell damage, the max progress you could get towards this would be 16 per game, meaning it would take at least 25 games. It'll probably still take 25 games or more, but with the decks we're introducing, you won't have to draw every single bleed every single time in order to make fast work of this. The first deck we're introducing is likely the most consistent at getting progress, but it has quite a steep learning curve. This loaned Garot deck from HS Replay aims to use discounts from Efficient Octobot, Coins from Loan Shark, and Gadget Zan Auctioneer to pull off a miracle turn where we play and draw a ridiculous number of cards in a single turn hopefully allowing us to use most or all of the bleeds shuffled into the deck alongside spell damage from Ethereal Og Merchant to increase the damage dealt. There are a lot of targeted synergies, and it takes a while to gauge when the right time to go in on the Miracle turn is. But to speed up the learning curve a little bit, there are helpful mulligan statistics on HS Replay's site for this deck. This next deck is a homebrew combination of Weapon Rogue and the Miracle Rogue deck we just introduced, but it's a little easier to cycle through the deck almost every game. However, the win rate ended up being quite low as we often drew to and through the Garots and Bleeds without as much spell damage from the Ethereal Og Merchants, leading to a number of games where we ran out of cards and swinging the massive Swine Tusk Shanks into taunts killed us due to Silverleaf Poison. So it's a bit easier to pilot and can probably keep a similar pace of achievement progress per hour as the last deck, but the overall win rate will likely be much lower. So steep learning curve or low win rate? Pick your poison. Pun intended. Or if you want to go a bit of a different route, you could try this Cold Light Bleeding Rogue in Wild. It uses a Mill Rogue shell to cycle through the deck quickly with Cold Light Oracles, while hiding from damage with Evasion, Cloak of Shadows, and Valera, so that you can survive long enough to shuffle a bunch of bleeds into your deck and draw a fair number of them. Augmented Elix will double the number of bleeds, improving the chances you draw them in time. Unfortunately, without being able to stick any spell damage to the board, you're relying heavily on the draw engine of this deck to get enough bleeds and maybe a little fatigue to finish off the opponent. Since 38% of our opponents were warlocks capable of shifting that fatigue damage back to us, and 31% of our opponents were raid your face off warriors, with only one opponent not being a secret mage to fill in the gap, I can say that we got okay progress towards the achievement, but the win rate against wild meta decks was, um, mm, 
not good. Other Garot deck experiments in Wild fared about as well. So while you can get some extra value from Elix in Wild, this is actually one of the few achievements I honestly think you'll make faster progress and have more fun working through in Standard rather than in Wild. If you're not facing 100% meta decks in Wild, perhaps after dropping MMR a bit with Whizbang decks from the previous achievement, maybe you'll have a better experience? I hope so. Whatever way you go after it, good luck forcing opponents to bleed from your bleeds. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, dropping a like will help others learn the truth about this guide, as the YouTube algorithm is filled with gizmos which you'll help activate. We'll be going undercover to find fun and efficient ways to interrogate the rest of the United in Stormwind achievements as well. So check back soon, or subscribe, because Fizz Flash distractors could make you miss our upcoming content. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy participating in Experiments Live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching, and have an awesome day.